All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program. And now we're going to jump right back in to the second lesson, which is the God's marriage, divorce, and remarriage to Israel. Now, before I get into that, I just want to share a little bit more information on the identity of who Israel is. There's so much information out there. I couldn't even fit it all in the first lesson that you just watched. So I wanted to just give a little bit more right here. And then we're going to get right into the marriage, divorce, and remarriage of Israel. Thank you guys for standing by and watching the rest of that information. There's just so much. Now, I had already kept you for over three hours in the first lesson. This one, I won't keep you that long. But now that you have the visual, now when we're saying things and, and, and reading things from scripture or reading things from history, it'll come alive in your mind. It's one of those things that now that you have the, the, the visual, now you have the realism that is the Bible and the scriptures it'll make a lot more sense. Now, when we read something, the picture in your mind changes. See, oftentimes a lot of people say, oh, well, the color doesn't matter and things like that. Well, look at how the Bible reads now when you realize that beyond the shadow of a doubt, that the people in the Bible were people of color. Now it's completely different. So it, it's not so much as, oh, the color matters. What matters is the truth. The truth matters. That's what's important. It's not important that the, uh, the, uh, the, the prophets, the apostles, the Messiah, even the father himself are melanated. What really matters and ultimately matters is that we have the truth, okay? I know a lot of times when people get into this type of information, they look at these things and they experience some sort of cognitive dissonance. That's not your problem, that's not my problem. That's up to them if they want to accept for what is right before them. That's all that matters. So let's go ahead and jump into this second lesson about the marriage, divorce and remarriage. And we're going to walk we're going to walk through the scripture and look at all the elements of this particular union and what happened, what went wrong and how things will get back in order according to the most high God. So with that, we're going to go ahead and jump in and I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 30. OK, so we're going to go all the way to Deuteronomy and we're going to go to chapter 30. And in this particular <clears throat> lesson, I'm just going to stick with the King James just for uh, because of the, the nature of this lesson. Right. And some of the other lessons that I do, I'll get into the scriptures and things like that. But for right now, we're going to stick with the King James. So Deuteronomy 30 and I'm going to start at verse one and I'll jump around a little bit now 30 and one it says and it shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee the blessings and the cursings which I have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God has driven thee now has that not happened. OK, now we as the melanated nations, have we not been driven into all these other nations? Right. And then we're starting to remember, starting to wake up to who our God is. Right. Verse two and shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. So he's going to turn the captivity over all this, the slavery, all those things will be overturned. Right. It has happened in the past and it's happening now and will happen in the future. In the past, it went to they went to the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Medo-Persian captivity. You get it, the Greek captivity, Roman captivity. Now we're in the American captivity. We went, we went into the San Sahara, went into uh, South America, Central America, North America, Australia. We went to all corners or even parts of Africa. OK, the children of the diaspora, the slave trade went into uh, to the four corners of the earth. Okay, went to the four corners of the earth, figure of speech, obviously. So we have to understand that the way we were literally scattered, the late, the way we were literally scattered, scattered, we will be gathered. Right now, we're gonna, I'm gonna jump down to verse eight, verse eight, and it says, 
And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Right. So that means we got to return back to the commandments. Right. Meaning get back into covenant. Right. Get back into the agreement. Uh, get back to where your forefathers agreed on this covenant. Well, we got to get back to that. Oh, well, we, we were not there. Well, he 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 will visit the iniquities upon the father um, to the uh, to, to a thousand generations. Right. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Forgive me. But. He's going to visit the iniquity upon the children, okay? Curses. And he said under these curses, generation after generation, unto generation, right? So we have to remember that. Now I'm going to drop down to 11. In verse 11 it says, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou should say, Who shall go up for us to heaven? And bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou may obey it. It's right here before us, right? Verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee. In thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest obey, or do it, that you may do it, that you know. So he said, you're going to learn it. You, you, you're going to figure it out. OK, you're going to learn who you are. You're going to figure it out. And then you're going to start obeying these commandments. Why? Because he wants us back in covenant. See, breaking the covenant is what got us in trouble in the first place. We had this agreement. Now, when you guys go into my my uh, marriage uh, series, when, when I'm talking about marriage and stuff like that, I'm saying there's three components there. Right. I'm saying there's witness, agreement and consummation. Right. So when you go break that covenant now, now we're in a marriage covenant and we'll and we'll look at all that. Um, we'll look at that. We'll look at when the most high proposed to Israel. OK, we'll look at that. We'll, we'll look at where they accepted the agreement. We'll even look at how it was consummated. We're going to look at all those things. This is the birth of a nation, right? Coming out of Egypt and then falling under the rod and, and, and going into covenant, agreeing to the covenant. Obviously, he didn't, he didn't hide what he, what, what he expected from his bride. Here are my commandments. You do it, I'll bless you. You don't, I'm going to have to curse you, right? So let's go ahead and continue. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8. Romans or Romans chapter eight. Let's look at that real quick, right? I mean, actually, Romans chapter ten. I was saying eight. I mean ten. And um, we're going to read up to verse eight, starting at verse one. Romans chapter ten, verse one. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end or aim of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness that is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Amen. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart. Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from heaven. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring uh, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what say it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. OK, so just simply another component, just a simply another component of it having faith, right? Being in this covenant, right? Simply another component, nothing to alarm yourself about, a whole, a completely component. Having faith is not a new, that's, that's not a new concept, okay? Having faith, the just shall live by faith, that's in the Old Testament as well, right? Okay, so that's not a new thing, right? So just another component, he's just quoting, you know where he quoted because we just read it, right? So now we're going to go back to Deuteronomy uh, 30. We're going to go back to Deuteronomy 30 here. Okay, and now I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to go to 15. I'm going to read 15 and 16. Now, look at what he says. He says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. 
And that I command thee this day to love thy God, the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Okay, so he said, I'm going to bless you if you do what I tell you to do, right? Now, let's drop down to 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you as a witness. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Thy seed, okay? That's how we end up in this too. You and your seed. We are the seed of, we are the ancestors, right? I mean, we're the seed of our ancestors, right? This is what we're talking about. So if we're the seed of our ancestors, then that's how all these curses fall upon us. We, we got to keep that in mind, right? So we're going to go ahead and continue. Let's go to... Exodus 19. Exodus 19. Because now, now, now I want to show you the proposal. When the Most High proposed, okay, when he proposed to Israel in the first place. So I want to go to 19. When the God of the Old, Old, Old Testament proposed to Israel in the first place, and were they accepted? And remember, I said those three components, right? I said there's three components that I see in, in, in the Bible. So in 19, I'm going to start at verse 1, Exodus 19, verse 1. And it says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a what? A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid, laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. I do not want you guys to forget that. Because you're going to have some people out there who think, oh, well, you know, the Lord, the God of the Old Testament, he's not being fair. He's not fair. He's laying out exactly his expectations. And they agreed to it. That's what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement. Both sides agreed. Okay. And he said all that they will, do, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So he returned the words of the people unto the Lord. In verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So they're about to... They're, they're about to meet him. So, okay, so, so, so now the husband is about to show up. Prepare yourselves. Here comes the groom, is what he's saying, right? I'm proposing. They say, yeah, we'll agree. And now, now the groom's coming. Okay? So let's, let's, let's keep that. Now, you saw where they accepted it, right? And I'm in Exodus. Now I'm going to go to Exodus 24. I'm going I'm to go to Exodus 24. Now, they accepted it. Now, they're going to do it again, right? Watch this. Exodus 24, we're going to repeat the same thing. Exodus 24, and I'm going to read 3 and 7. Watch this. Verse 3, it says, And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said we will do. Are we, are we, are we starting to get this? Are we starting to get it? He lays it out there. And then they agree. Okay? I hope you guys are understanding this. Now, I'm going to drop down to verse 7 real quick. Let's look at this. 
And he took the book of the covenant. Listen at covenant agreement. It's a contract. Okay. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord had said, we will we do and be obedient. They threw in obedient. That's the agreement our forefathers made. All you said, we're going to do it. We'll do it. We, we take the terms of the agreement. We looked at the terms and conditions. We saw the disclaimer. We Yeah, we signed up for all that. Us and our seed. That, that is what's happening here. That, that's what just happened in, 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 this, in, this, in these passages here. Three times we see, yep, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. And be obedient. Let's keep going. What, so, so why exactly did he, why, what, what's going on? So why did the most, this is the bride, Israel, Israel being the bride. Why did the most high choose Israel? Well, I mean, what's going on? Why? So why is it Israel? Is it because they're so great? Is it because they're so obedient? What, what is it? Let's go on over to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's see why. Let, let's let the scripture say why. Okay? Seven. Seven and seven. Deuteronomy seven and seven. Verse seven says, The Lord did not set his love upon you, talking about Israel, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all the people, right? Just come from the 12 boys when they came around. There are other nations already around, already procreated, already grew. But of all the nations, Israel was the smallest nation at the time. Okay? So this is what he says. You're the fewest of all the people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, okay? Unto your fathers has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, Egypt, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Are we starting? Are we seeing this? Okay. Are we seeing this? And we're not done. We're going to keep going a little bit more. <clears throat> Nine. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Okay. Thousand generations. Right. And watch this. And repay them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. Are we understanding what is going on here? So he loves those who keep his commandments and things. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, um, you know, God loves or the Lord loves, you know, people and, uh, and, 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 and 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 he hates to sin he loves the person no who's carrying that sin okay who's committing that who's committing that right that that's really what's going on he ate those who are committing those type of things and i'm talking about in the sense here covenant breakers he don't like covenant breakers okay so this is where you know you got to get serious okay so he'll do this uh he'll love you to a thousand generations and he'll he'll punish he'll go a thousand generations if he have to to eradicate that little seed of sin that's just traveling through our blood that we just keep passing on from generation to generation to generation. When are we going to be a generation? When are we going to raise up a generation that actually loves the most high God? That's what you and I are supposed to be doing. If we're going to be having children anyway, if we're going to be doing now, I understand our children can grow up and they start making their own decisions. They get out of your house and they start making their own decision. That's not on you, but you train up a child in the way they should go and they won't depart from it. Hey, It'll come to mind when they get out there in that world and they see how wicked it is and they see, it, you know, they think they know. I know. I, I get it. They think they know everything. And they're going to get out there and fall on their face a couple of times. Then they'll start remembering what you taught them. And we see how the world is going right now. We gotta, we, we're trying to raise up. You and I, we should be trying to raise up children of the covenant. I understand, oh, you got six, seven uh, children, they're all going over. If just one go the way of God, that's good. 
We, we, we got we to gotta raise up people who keep and love the covenant, all right? The agreement, right? So that's what we should do, okay? So I'm just, I'm, I finish right here um, at, at 11 there. It says, Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them, to do them. All right. Now you can keep reading that and you can see how he can do all the blessings and all that stuff. And we'll get back to that a little bit later. Okay. But now I'm still in seven. Let me drop down to Deuteronomy 10. Okay. Let's look at this. Let's look at Deuteronomy 10 and I'm going to start at verse 12. Okay. Now watch this. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Oh, now you, now he's going to tell you exactly what he expects. Okay. Look at that. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good, for thy own good, for your own good. Really? He wants you to do that for your own good? Let's keep going because we're going to stop at 16. Behold, the heaven and the heaven and the heavens of heaven is the Lord thy God, the earth also with all that that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them. Ooh, that 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 would be us. Even you above all people as it is this day. Look at that. Now watch this. Circumcise therefore the foreskins of your heart, and be no more stiff necked. And be no more stiff neck. Because we're not going to be. <sighs> He's saying, listen to what I'm saying. This is what I'm asking you. Love me, fear me, obey me. You heard of the five love languages that don't work with the most high. His is not is not one of those five. His is obedience. OK, that's another love language. For the most high, it's obedience. And we need to do our best. Yes, like a baby, you'll stumble, you'll fall. Keep getting up, keep trying to walk. Because we have to what? Walk in his ways. Okay? I I get it. Okay? I get it. I understand. It can, be, it can seem overwhelming. It's just one step at a time. Period. Just like a baby to the most high, you're a child. OK, we're all children. You just keep trying. You keep trying. You keep striving to enter in. And be no more stiff neck. OK, this is how we got our divorce. This is from the most high. This is this is how he put us away, because for a while, every man was doing whatever he wanted, according to the imagination of his own mind, to the, all the things he wanted to do. All that. Doing, doing, doing whatever he can imagine and then try to sprinkle a little uh, Christ on it, sprinkle a little Jesus on it and try to make it all holy. No, 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 no. That's not the covenant. That's not the agreement. You can't go rewriting the agreement. Go right back to this contract. Look at that. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. The whole book is the, the whole book. OK, it's the contract. All right. So, like you said, Circumcise in verse 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff neck. Be no more stiff neck. But what did Israel do? Let's go to Exodus. Okay, we're going to go to Exodus 32, actually. Let's go to Exodus 32. Okay. When we get 32, I'm going to start at verse 1. We'll jump around a little bit. We're going to go to 31. It's really going to be 31. I mean, 30, verse 32, we're going to start at verse 1, right? <clears throat> we're going to go about 14 verses here. But it says in 32 of Exodus, And when the people saw that Moshe, or Moses, delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as, as for this Moses or Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in the ears 
and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. And after he had made a molten calf. And they said, these be the gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, now look at look, look what's going on. Notice I said that, that, that that's not what we agreed to. That's not what we agreed to whatsoever. So the first chance they get when they settle at the, at, uh, at, you know, at the Mount, at Mount Sinai, the first, they come out of Egypt, come out of the Red Sea, saw the plagues, locusts, got all that. We saw the Most High deliver them out of Egypt through the hands of Moses. We see all that. Go through the wilderness and all that. And now they're at the Mount Sinai and they get, they, they, they about to get the cup. First thing they do is go seeking after other gods. That is the first thing they do. Just, 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 just homeborn slaves. I, I, you know, I, I've said in other lessons, I've said in the past, I said, you know, Israel, we're, we're, we're built to worship something. We, we know. I, I know there's some people claim to be agnostic and atheist and all that stuff. Man, we have eternity in our heart. There's something we know. We feel like there's something. There's a higher power. There's something, right? Okay. The difference with us, we know who our power is. We know what we worship. That's that's the difference, right? Everybody worships something, even if they're self, their own mind and intellect, or all these thousands and thousands of other gods and religions that are out there, right? First chance that they get, they go ahead and fashion some, some, some gods, okay? And then the next thing they do, these are the gods that say, really? The, 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 ones you, you, the ones you just made 10 minutes ago are the ones who, who, who brought you out of Israel? Egypt? Egypt, excuse me. The ones that were just in your ears? That that that's the God that you really? Five. And, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamations and said, Tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord. Now, I, let, let me just take a, a, a quick aside. A quick aside. Because what a couple of months ago, we just came out of that season, right? The season of the heathen, right? And I try to explain this whole every year is it's someone it, 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 it's obligatory at this point. OK, it's going to happen. Someone somewhere. What's you know, what's the deal with Christmas and all that? And of course, look at the Folly Days lessons. and I'll, uh, We can go into that. That's not about this. But I did speak to a young lady and she was talking about um, I was telling her, you know, I was telling her that it's pagan. Tell her, you know, the Lord didn't want us to do that and all that. I did all that, you know, the Jeremiah 10, all that, all that. Right. And she said, well, what if I decorate a tree to the glory of Jesus. I decorate to his glory. I celebrate to his glory. I celebrate, you know, this is what he wants. Okay, brothers and sisters, no. Because that's not what he agreed to. That's not what he wrote. That's not what it's about. This is what Israel did. They went and just, okay, uh, we're going to do it this way. Let's go ahead and fashion it and worship it and just worship a whole nother God. And then Aaron makes a feast up. No, he doesn't. The Lord doesn't want that kind of feast. Here's the thing. You can do what you want. You can. You, you can. The question is, does the most high accept it? That's my question. You, you can. You can do whatever you want. Question is, does he accept it? Let's continue, okay? In verse 6, he says, And they rose up early on the, mor on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. They just had a great big celebration, right? And the Lord, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people, which were brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molten calf and have worshiped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh-oh. And the Lord said unto Moses and Moshe, I have seen this people and behold, it is a stiffed necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath 
may wax hot against them and I that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. Look at what 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 what, what the record now, didn't it? The record just skipped. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't mean he likes it. Doesn't mean he accepts it. Keep that in mind. Oh, oh, the Lord knows my heart. The one that's desperately wicked? That one? The trouble is, yeah, he does know that one. He calls it desperately wicked. He calls it stiff-necked, hard-hearted. Is that the one? Is that the one that you want him to read? Is, is, is that it? That's the one you want him to know? I told you, his number one love language, obedience. Obedience. And we should count ourselves lucky that he has mercy and is long suffering. We, we should count ourselves lucky with that. He says so that he that he might make a new nation. And Moses besought in verse 11, and Moses besought the Lord his God and said, God, why dost thy wax hot against hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out? Like, oh, the most high tricked them to bring him out just to kill him, right? For mischief did he bring him out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Maybe you just, just don't do it. Change, change your mind, right? Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou sweareth by thy own self and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken or will or will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented, or changed his mind, of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So he changed, he, 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 changed, he changed his mind. He said, okay, you know what? I won't destroy them all. Now first, are we not lucky to have someone like Moses? You and I wouldn't even be here. So, that's something right there to think about, but we're going to go on to the next one. Okay, the, but did it stop there? Moses intervened and helping us out, but did it stop there? No, no. So let's go ahead to Jeremiah chapter 8. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 8. Israel... It, it, it just, it just keeps happening with Israel, brothers and sisters. It just keeps happening. So we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 8. And I'm going to start at 3. We're going to go 3 through 5 real quick. Which reads, And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got into Nehemiah. I do that every time. Nehemiah, Jeremiah. I do that every time. So chapter 8 in Jeremiah. I'm going to start at 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remaineth of this evil family, which remain in all the places whether I have driven them, said the Lord of hosts or the Lord of armies, right? Lord of hosts is Lord of armies. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, thus said the Lord, shall they fall and not rise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. He's saying they refuse to return. They just don't want to listen. We're going to drop down to verse 10. Therefore, will I give their wives unto others? Okay. Have the children of slavery have well, some of these slaves actually married to one another. Right. And were their wives taken away from them by a master or, or, or someone of another nation? Did that not happen? That happened then, it happened in, in, in slavery, and it, it just continues to just happen. Right now, they, you know, they, people just run around just cheap and sleep with each other and all that, just because emotions change. Oh, I'm not happy, and you know, I, God just wants me to be happy, and I'll just see that. See how deceptive the, the heart is? You see how deceptive it is? So now we can justify adultery because 
uh, we're, we fought, we fell out of love. I'm, I'm not in love with my husband anymore. He doesn't do the things he used to do for me anymore. That, that kind of, but my point is how the heart is desperately wicked, right? So let's just point, just making that point right there. So we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. 10 and 11. <clears throat> Uh, back to 10. Therefore, will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them for everyone from the least, even unto the greatest is given to covetousness from the prophet, even unto the priests, everyone dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Yeah, that happens. That has happened. That has happened in the past. And then you got and today you have a bunch of false prophets saying everything is peaches and cream and rainbows and lollipops and unicorns and all this other stuff when it's not really. It's not really. It's kind of like the days of Noah when everybody is getting up and celebrating and being merry until the doors are shut and the rain starts to come. It's gonna be like that. It's 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 nice, it's tolerable right now. Okay, we're going to keep keep going. At 15, 15. We look for peace, but no good came. And for a time for of health and behold trouble. Okay? So we have that drop down to 20, 20 and 20, 20 to 22. The harvest is past, the summer is ended and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black astonishment has taken hold of me. I am hurt. I am black and astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Like Israel, like when you, when, when you look at the melanated people today, you look at a black African-American, Afro-American, the Negro, I mean, look at it right now. Why are they so downtrodden? Why are they much maligned? Why do they go through the troubles, the perils, the things that are going through? Why are all these things happening? Why would you even have an uprising of something called, you know, Black Lives Matter or something like that? Why would you have such an outcry of reparations and things like that? Why, why, why do these things exist? See, the underlying problem is that the Israel the unawakened Israel don't even know that we're living under a curse. Now, some people think that is just damnation or something like, no, it's not damnation. It's not good, but it's identification. At least you understand, at least when you're awakened, you understand what is going on and why it is happening. And then you know how to navigate. You know how to move forward in this world. But when you have no clue who you are, when you have no clue what is happening to you, when you have no clue what has been placed upon you, what has been placed upon your shoulders, then you just keep making the same mistakes. You just keep making the exact same mistakes. But, let, but, but, but let's, let's, let's continue. Because that's backsliding Israel, backsliding. Okay, backsliding. And they keep doing it. Now we're going to go to Hosea. Okay, let's go to Hosea. Basically, cheating on our husband is what we're doing. Israel, that is. Okay, so let's go to... Hosea. And when I get to Hosea, I want chapter 13. 13, just read the first two verses. And when Ephraim spake trembling, he halted himself in Israel, but when he offended, when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they send more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding all of it with the work of the craftsmen. 
And they say unto them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. This idolatry, this most high God helps, helps us deliver us time after time after time after time. And when we don't have a strong leader, when we have someone stand up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not supposed to be doing that. Come back to the covenant. We don't have that. And people are left to their own devices because, you know, iron sharpens iron. We're supposed to, you know, dwell together, you know, supposed, supposed, supposed to do that, supposed to keep each other on track. Yes, you are your brother's keeper. They're supposed to do these type of things. And as soon as they don't, make some images, start worshiping the way they want to worship. How, how, how we feel is how it goes. I'm not anti, I'm not anti-emotion. We can have emotions. I'm anti-emotionalism because now we just worship and do things according to our emotions. Also to our own vain imagination. Look at what happens every single time. Ephraim gone, let's go making us some gods. Start doing whatever, whatever we want to do. We have a good king. We're serving. Think, think about all the kings of um, the kings of uh, Israel, right? You have a Saul, you have a bad king. Not doing what you're supposed to do. You have David, you have a pretty good king. Okay? You have Solomon. I have a pretty good king. Then when it breaks up and there's and, and the kingdom splits and all that, have a good king, bad king, good king, bad king, good king, bad king, bad king, serve other gods, do whatever they want. You guys know the story. Let's keep it moving. Proverbs. Because we can walk around here and think that we're just, ah, we'll be all right. Not if we're not in covenant. And it may seem like we're okay, but if we're not in covenant, then you got nothing. You and I have nothing if we're not in covenant. We're not in agreement with our power. You don't have anything. 21. Proverbs 21, and I just want verse 16. Of Proverbs 21. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Now, there's your spiritually dead right there. So if we're if we if we really don't want to. If we don't understand, we just want to just have this senseless worship. We don't want to get back in the covenant of agreement. If you're not in the covenant, you don't have which means you don't have an agreement with God. If you, you don't want to walk in the covenant, if you don't want to understand that. That means you have no agreement with the one you claim to serve. The God of this Bible is a God of order. He actually wants you to understand. Let's keep going. Isaiah 65. Okay, and we're going to go Isaiah 65. And I want verses two through five. And he says, I have spread out my hands all day unto a what? Rebellious people, which walk it in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoke me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in gardens and burn incense upon altars of brick. All these little sacrifices that they want and they don't want to listen to what he's saying. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels. Which say what? Which say, stand by thyself. Don't, don't come near me. Come not near me, for I am holier than thou. What he says about this, people who are holding out these, I'm a good Sunday Christian. I, I, I do all these things, right? What, 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 what do you say? These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all day. When smoking, you know, does it irritate you? It irritates you, right? So the most high saying these type of people, they annoy me. They irritate me. These holier than thou. That do what they want to do. Worship they want to work, worship the way they want to worship. Worship all the other gods, too. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to press upon you that it is important that we get an understanding. It's important that you have a covenant, an agreement with the most high God. 
Okay? If you don't have an agreement, you don't serve the guy who you claim you serve. You don't have it. If he doesn't agree, he doesn't agree on your terms. He has terms. It's not your terms. These terms were written before you got here. So it's a take it or leave it deal. Let's continue. We're still in Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50. One verse. And verse 1. Thus said the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. Talking about Israel. We're talking about the marriage. I, I, I showed you the marriage. I showed you the agreement, right? All that the Most High said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. Be obedient. And I didn't read it yet, but that's when, when, when Moses took the hyssop and the blood and all that. And he's like sprinkling over the congregation. Oh, there's a consummation right there. Go back in the Torah and look at it. I call heaven and earth as a witness this day. As your witness. Witness, agreement, the covenant, consummation, the blood and the hyssop. Now, under the new covenant, because I know there's some people probably looking right now. Oh, yeah, but Jesus, but Jesus. I get it, okay? I'm talking about the old covenant, right? Now, the new covenant, same thing. Agreement, a law. Think not I have come to destroy the law, okay? And the blood of Christ, which is the consummation, is ratified by his blood and the witnesses, the church, angels, the saints, the most high himself. Same thing. Same thing. We're going to keep it going. They're right here. He, he, he puts them away. He puts them away. And look what he says over here in Hosea. Right. Look what he says in, in Hosea. Hosea chapter two. And we're going to go two through seven. Watch this. Two through seven in Hosea. He said, plead with your mother. Plead. So she is not my wife. Talking about Israel. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. That's Israel. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. Did this not happen to Israel? And I will not have mercy upon her children for they be the children of whoredoms. Ooh, that, ooh, that hurts. That that stings right there. Okay? But look at it. He divorced us. When you get these captivities and captivities and captivities and captivities, it's part of the divorce. See, we need to experience what life is like with our high power, and we need to experience what life is like without him. And life without him is hopelessness, slavery, poverty, Oppression, mental anguish, physical anguish, disease and pestilence. So if we don't have the covering of our husband, if we don't have that covering of our Messiah, bad things happen. Okay? Verse 5. For their mother had played the harlot. She that conceived them has done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water and my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. I mean, we are not going to prosper, right? And she shall follow after her lovers. But she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. You won't find fulfillment. It's not your true husband. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, 
for then was it better with me than now. Then she's going to realize you go run from husband to husband. You go run around. And you, it wasn't good enough. Your, your actual husband, your real husband, it wasn't good enough. He was pretty good, but you thought there was something better out there. So your God, he was pretty good. Yeah, you know, he saved us out of Israel. I mean, I, I mean that's cool. You know, I mean, that's cool. But what if I go and go get with one of these bad boy gods out there? What if I go get one of these, uh, these, these, these nicer gods and let's just let me do whatever I want? That's why, that's why we use this in um, familiar terms, right? In, in, in relationship types, your husband, we're his children, we're his wife, the bride, the groom, all these family and relational type terms. It's just so why, so you and I can understand what's going on. It's just so we, just so we understand, just so we get it. That's why these, that's why these terms happen. Just so we get it, right? So we moving on from Hosea. We're gonna go back to Jeremiah, right? Because <laughs> comes to Israel, brothers and sisters. We can be hard of learning. It happens. We can be hard of learning. So we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Let's read 1 through 8, Jeremiah chapter 3. And then we'll jump around. And they say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's wife, shall he return unto her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, said the Lord. Lift up thy eyes unto the high places and see where thou has not been lain with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Okay, saying you polluted it with your whoredom and your wickedness. Therefore, the showers have been withdrawn, so no rain, and there has been no latter rain, and thou has a whore's forehead, thou refuses to be ashamed. You, you out there, you all proud. You screwed up and you're proud of it. You got your head all up and high. With thou, verse four, with thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the God of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. Verse 6. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and unto every green tree, and there has played the harlot to all these other nations have found these other gods, these other religions, these other traditions, all these other little things that are out there, and Israel is trying it out. Is there not Israel in like a Wic Wiccan practice? And is there not uh, Israelite atheists and agnostics? Is there not Israelite, you know, Buddhists, okay? Is there not Israelite Scientology? Is there not Israelite, uh, you know, uh, Roman Christianity? Is there not Israelites in like every flavor of religion that you can possibly think of with very few exceptions? There's some, but very few exceptions. Israel go play after all these other gods. They go looking for all these other gods because it's not because they're actually looking for God. They're looking for what suits them. What allows them to remain the same? What allows them to be who they are the same? They don't have to change anything. This is not what the Most High is talking about. We're going to drop down to 11. Verse 11, and the Lord said unto me, the backslider in Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Okay, because, uh, Israel and Judah are the brides of the Most High, right? Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backslide of Israel, says the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am what? Merciful, said the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. You need to be saying hallelujah to that, okay? And take them up on that offer. 
I won't, I won't be angry forever. I won't keep my anger forever. 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge your iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. So in every nation, every culture, everything, you've done that. Ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. What did he say in 14? Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you. What? Look, 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 look at what we're talking about here, brothers and sisters. And I will take you one from a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, okay? Because not everyone's going to do it, right? One from a city. It might be one person in a whole city. It might be only two people in that whole family. That's what we're talking about. It's not going to be everybody. It's going to be those who turn from backsliding and come right back into the covenant. Are we understanding? Are we starting to get it? Okay, let's keep going. We've got a few more we have to do. Okay, he said, I am married unto you. Okay, so now he's trying to, 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 to bring them back. Right now he's trying to start to bring them back. Okay, I'm in Jeremiah. Let me go to Hosea real quick. Let's go to Hosea chapter 2. Okay, I'm going to start at 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. So, hey, Israel, now he's bringing us back. He's bringing us back. The words are starting to make sense. Now that we're awake the words are starting to make sense, he's starting to bring them back. And I will give her her vineyards from thence in the valley of Achor for a door of hope and she uh, and she shall sing there in the days of her as in the days of her youth and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt and I shall be at that day said the Lord that thou shall call me Ishi and shall call me no more Baali right so it's going to be Ishi, husband right okay Ishi all right and then I'm um, going to Drop to 18. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. So no more war, no more issues that we have today. It's not going to be the same. 19. And I will... And I will betroth thee unto me forever engage, right? Marry. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. These are the things that he said he's going to do. He's going to do all these things. Now, let's drop down to 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say unto them, which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. He's starting to take us back. He's starting to remarry us. That's what the new, co new covenant is about. Just remarrying us. Same law, same agreement. But rather than being on stone, it's going to be in your heart. Rather than the blood of bulls and goats, it's Mashiach. Are we starting to understand the covenant a little bit more? It's important to get back to that. So we're going to get back to that. We're going to go over to Daniel. Watch this. Let's go on to Daniel. We just got a couple of more places and we'll close out. Go to Daniel. And we're going to do chapter 2. And Daniel, let's just get... One verse, 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break into pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Meaning no other kingdom will be above this kingdom that the Most High will set up for his people or his bride. Almost done. Matthew 15. Matthew and Matthew 15. And I just actually want one verse there. So 15 and 24. And 24. 
And uh, let's see here, Matthew 15, 24. And it says, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not giving any of this to anyone else. I'm not giving any of this to anyone else. Christ came back to reclaim. I came for Israel. I came for Israel. I was sent for Israel. I came to pick up my bride. Let's go to our last, our last spot. Isaiah 27. Last spot and we'll close it out. Isaiah 27. Okay, Isaiah 27. I'll just read 12 and 13. Now let's see what he says, okay? And shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt. And ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts of the land of Egypt, and, from, and, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mountain at Jerusalem. So, 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 what, so what did we learn? What, what did we get? We saw the marriage. Okay, we saw the marriage. First, with that agreement. He rescued them out of Egypt, brought them out. He says, hey, these are the things that I want you to do. And then they agreed to it. I told you about Moses grabbing the hyssop and, 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 and the blood and mixing it all together and sprinkling it on the congregation, the blood agreement, blood consummation right there, sprinkling on the congregation. And heaven and earth and the host, every, it's all a witness that it, it was recorded. Witness, agreement, consummation, we have it. Same thing with the New Testament. Oh, brother, we're in the New Covenant. Okay, yes, okay, no problem. Witness, same heaven and earth, same angels, the ones that were the ones that were alive back then and saw it was alive in the New Testament. Same law, different blood, but the Messiah's blood, same thing. So it was about getting back into covenant with our God. Now listen, you in, in this series, okay, this is only the second one. Let me urge you, let me urge you, please, to watch the last two. You need the, you need the whole picture, okay? We got the color and the curses, the identity, okay? We got the marriage, which is this lesson, the marriage, divorce, and remarriage of Israel. The next two, we got the kings and priests. Oh, what, what, what's expected of us? What are we supposed to be doing? And then the last one, we got the adoption and the, and the redemption of Israel. So in a nutshell, we have Israel, past, prince, and future. You need to know that you have a past, you have a purpose, and you have a place in the kingdom. You have a high power. I hope that somebody has got some understanding from this lesson. So until next time, join me on the next lesson. Black history from the Bible. Search the scriptures. Improve all things. Shalom, Israel.